Muralida was was in that same predicament, you know, in that enigma. But what do I know about Krishna? How do I paint Krishna? You know, in this struggle, you know, the internal thing, and what's my qualification, and how is it possible, and what is, you know, how can I look at the, what I'm doing as, as, as a divine representation, and if I can't, you know, how, what would it be to somebody else? And uh, so he asked, he, sitting in, with Prabhupada in, in the room, and uh, it was one of those rare times. I think it was in San Francisco, actually. And Merlida was just starting to, he was a new comer, and was just starting to paint. But the same thing, Prabhupada charged him with, you know, with work. And so he wanted to know, so he was sitting around, and Prabhupada looked. And there were many different pictures of Krishna, and, and you know, posters, and calendar pictures, and little things in Prabhupada's desk. And so Merlida was bewildered. He said, well, which one of the, and they were different. So, so Pro, he, said, he asked Prabhupada, he said, we well, have so many pictures of Krishna here, but they're all different. So, which one is most like, do, can you direct me, can you, add, can you tell me which one of these is most like Krishna? And he said, and Prabhupada looked, him, looked at him as though he was totally crazy. He said, I, I have never, he said, I have never received uh, such a, such a clear message from anyone that I, that I'm out of my head. He probably looked at him and he said, he said, they're all Krishna. They're all Krishna. Each one of these is exactly like Krishna. Prabhupada, I, I think that uh, our temple can be maintained uh, by uh, doing a little business. So immediately he said, you should not do. And I said, why not? I said, because, he said, because your business is preaching. You are a brahmachari. He said, if there is a grihasta, and I said, yes, well, Lochananda. He said, yes, Lochananda can do. He is grihasta. He can do business. But you are a brahmachari. Your business is preaching. So he gave me a very important instruction there, and I, and I did follow that. Uh, and Lochananda did start the business at that time, and, and, it, and it helped the temple a lot. But Prabhupada was very uh, firm about that point. And then he told how his, his guru Maharaj had gotten somebody to buy cigarettes for a visiting scholar from Germany. Yeah, I mean, he was open-minded. When I was in Russia, because there was a scarcity of food, he found out, uh, everything was the same in the stores. He said, you could even eat meat if you have to to keep this preaching going on. I didn't have to, but there was things like that. So uh, this was very interesting because it was Akadashi, and he said, my Guru Maharaj on Akadashi fed the quarter, so feed everybody. And he had us cook regular prasadam and still observe Prakadash yourselves, but get, in other words, don't discontinue the Prashadam distribution program. Don't discontinue it. One, one time in, in Vrindavan, he was... Um, he was uh, recovering after, after a long illness. Apparently, he began to take his morning walks again, and, and the devotees were overjoyed to, you know, <laughs> turned out in, in great numbers to walk with him. And, and then Prabhupada was um, feeling very inspired. These walks, but but he would come back from his morning walk. He was practically, you know, he was practically exhausted. He would he like be laying there for the rest of the day. But on the morning walk, he was. Energetic, he had, he would talk and be very animated and argue it, you know, be very strong. And uh, so I remember one morning, he said, uh, he said, he said, I, he said, how is this? He said, I'm, I can walk, and when I'm walking, I'm, I have the, the strength. And. Uh, you know, here we are, talking and walking and feeling strong. But when I, I get back, I'm not, uh, 
He was just thinking out loud. I have no strength. I cannot move almost. What is that? <laughs> and it was the other devotees who became really thoughtful with him, you know. So, what is that? How is that? And Brahmananda said, It's transcendental. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada looked at him for a moment and said, Yes. <laughs> When the deities were going to be installed, and we had got, uh, secured a new temple in Paris on Avenue Foch, uh, I had purchased some very, uh, you know, expensive perfumes, natural oils like natural jasmine oil that's costs maybe ten, twelve thousand dollars a uh, a kilogram, and I bought all these precious oils in smaller quantities for the installation of deities. So when Prabhupada was, when Radharani was being bathed. Prabhupada uh, applied some perfume on her face and her body. And then all of a sudden, he stopped. And uh, then he asked for yogurt. Because the perfume must have, in some way or other, reacted with Radharani's skin, and it, it created a, like a slight blemish on her face and on her cheek. So for the next 20 minutes, Prabhupada bathed her cheek with uh, yogurt, and I felt very bad about that. That I had, you know, sec I had purchased that oil, and uh, he spent a long time bathing Radharani after that, and looking at her, and kept looking at her cheek, and you know, was very attentive. I don't know how that happened, but uh, you know, there was like uh, he was so attentive, and all the devotees noticed. He just kept putting yogurt there and looking at it, and putting more yogurt like that. We were at Gorchan Goswami's house for, lu for lunch, and uh, he, he asked me, what do you think of Gorchan Goswami? And I said that I think that he loves you. He's a rascal, but I'm fond of him. But he is a rascal. Prabhupada said, that is how I feel. He has invited us to have lunch for and We shall go. So we're there, and again, Prabhupada was sliding different chapatis, puris, Subji on my plate, he just kept on feeding me like that, all bitten, which I thought was great. And so then I would, I would slide it on somebody else's plate so they could share in the, the nectar. So then Gurchan Goswami, he uh, was smoking beaties. We used to sometimes uh, take them when we were doing our parikrama of Radha Dhammada Temple. So he would, because he'd say, where are my beaties? And he'd yell and we'd watch the we'd watch the, him getting excited, like the thief who used to be a thief, and uh, asked his guru, I like the, the response that you get from that people when their things are stolen. So the guru said, just put their luggage in other rooms, and then they, they had the response, and then he said, my dear Prabhus, I was a thief, and I can't do that anymore, I'm a Vaishnava, but I just wanted to see the response, and here's your luggage back. So, uh, so Gorchan Goswami, at the end of the meal, wanted to have a beady. He was, he was, couldn't see. He was actually almost totally blind. So we went behind the door and had a beady. The only thing it was, he wasn't behind the door. He was in the front of the door in kind of a sneaking view. And Prabhupada was eating, so then I just, I said, like that, and we had a good laugh because it was really obvious. He was trying to sneak and there was smoke all over the place. So I saw how he freely gave of his time to them, and he would listen to their problems. He would even, that was the wonderful thing, he would even talk about their family problems. He would talk about, you know, petty things. And then, you know, he would encourage them to come more often to the temple or, for example, Dr. Patel. At one time, Dr. Patel was sick for a few days on the morning walk. So Prabhupada got very concerned. Where's Dr. Patel? Somebody please call him, find out what's happening. So, I mean, overall, I, I was in Bombay for many years. Then I became the president of Calcutta. And there also I had a lot of opportunity to, actually more so in Calcutta, to uh, be trained almost by Prabhupada. And I saw him working with the Indians. And um, it, to me, it just... 
gave a whole new perspective to my understanding of how big Prabhupada's plan was in Krishna consciousness. It was, you know, not some type of just cult or something, but he had an idea of a nation or an internation of Krishna conscious people. I asked Prabhupada that Gaurachan Goswami is in the Goswami family, but he doesn't want his son to, to eat prasadam with us. And Prabhupada said, yes, that is a distinction. You can find out how they really feel about us in Vrindavan. Invite them to prasadam. And if they come, they are for us. And if they don't, they are not. And it was one of these little etiquette things. <laughs>